morning traders this is Blake Morrow and you're listening to the face webinar we um we have not seen Dale this morning and uh, I listen I know that uh, coming in at, uh, at, at or trying to wake up at three four o'clock in the morning is not everybody's cup of tea and I can tell you one thing I have slept in before uh, back when I've done my webinars in the past and uh, and, and I know that uh, that that can get happen so um, so I'm sure Dale probably just slept in a little bit and we haven't seen him we haven't seen him this morning I'm sure he's fine but but we wanted to obviously continue on with today's webinar uh, I don't know who today's guest is but I'm sure Dale will probably be back here in in in, in you know as soon as he gets up but what I thought I would do this morning is take you through some of like the 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 basics and 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 you know through some of the major currencies before I turn it over to uh, Steven Stelios uh, here in a little bit. But again, we we're not too sure um, uh, where Dale's at. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. So, uh, with that being said, let me see uh, some good mornings. Well, it looks like Patrick says good morning, Dale, and I'm not coach. Good morning, uh, Kevin, um, Arif, and uh, let me know. Ted, let me know if you guys can hear me. Okay. Test, test, test. Make sure you guys can hear me. Okay. Test, test, test. You test, sound test. perfectly fine, Blake. You sound okay. perfectly fine. Good morning. Okay. All right. Good morning. Um, so, so we're going to go through we're going to go through some of the majors, like I said earlier. And I'm I'm not like and and I was just mentioning to you guys earlier. I don't know where Dale's at at the moment, but uh, but I'm sure he'll pop up shortly. So, with the euro dollar, one one of the things that we've seen, and we're seeing actually the follow through from Friday, where we had the dollar index that um, that had the big rejection. We talked about it yesterday. Uh, we had that shooting star reversal yesterday was more of a consolidation and today we're getting that downside follow-through uh, as you know a lot of traders are stepping back in front of their uh, their computers today so this is going to be the real key um, that you know what the dollar does down here uh, here in the in the coming I would say in probably the next 50 cents in the dollar index now one of the one of the big conversations that's swirling around the FX market at the moment is um, what's happening with uh, with Senator Bob Corker this rift that we're seeing between um, the president and you know one of the top Republicans is kind of sending a little bit of a shockwave through the dollar index at the moment and the reason why is because people are not worried that the that the that the current administration may not be able to push the tax uh, their tax plan through uh, and and because of that the dollar is feeling a little bit of heat now, now if you think about it because we we've, we've been um, we've been talking about uh, about you know the implications and just yesterday we were just talking about the implications of what w w could drive down the dollar and what could you know could pause it down here so like let's imagine the dollar index over the course of the next couple of days you know makes it a little lower and we, we we trade down to uh, 92 uh, I'm just throwing numbers out there like 9220 or you know 92 you know 80 somewhere something somewhere down here then you know whether the tax plan or you know, it looks like that you know the 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 tax legislation is going to go through or not. Probably is going to be the determining factor whether the dollar goes up from here or down from here. So that, in my opinion, is is probably the more important thing that's happening right now. And that that's one of the one of the um, you know one of the things that's weighing on the dollar. We had this false breakout here. Now, technically, we knew the dollar was going to come down, or at least had a good idea that the dollar is going to come down, and here it is, and it's going to come down, probably, uh, and try to form some sort of, you know, inverted head and shoulder, or at least the shoulder part. And whether we get any follow through to the downside, or whether we get a reversal, probably has more to do with uh, if we feel that taxes are going to be pushed through, or a tax, um, a new, um, you know, uh, tax overhaul is going to be passed 
or not. So that that's like I said, that's really the talk of the town right now with the dollar, and it, it hasn't affected stocks at all. I mean, stocks are still very strong. You can see we're 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 still you know cruising higher, and this is one one of the things that that the market you can tell the market doesn't really care or is not really. Um, uh, not really so concerned with with this right now as the the stock market still continues to be strong, but the dollar sometimes is also viewed as the more of the leading indicator when you're talking about uh, the markets. You know, the dollar starts to 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 to, to feel some of the movement ahead of time. Um, now. It, it, let's take a look at some of these other majors. So we have the the pound dollar. Um, the pound has uh, has. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I think I mentioned this yesterday. I'm a little bummed out that the dollar didn't um, get an opportunity to um, to pull to to continue to rally against the pound. I really wanted to see the pound pull back even further than it has, and and the pound has continued higher. But if, if you look longer term. One of the things that that has has stuck out to me in in the uh, in the pound is that we have this big big you know rejection of a multi-year trend line up here, and we we're coming back down to support here, coming closing in on like the 130, 129, 50 level. I really wanted to be a, a buyer of the pound down here, and just didn't get that opportunity. And now I'm. I, I personally, I'm, I'm feeling that I'm, I might have missed the boat a little bit. So if you, because if it, the the uh, pound is, if we break through this resistance here at like 132 and a quarter, that's going to put us right back. You know, it's going to put us right back up towards you know the 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 middle, if not the the upper end of this big triangle. And like I said, I'm I'm kind of bummed out that I. Uh, I, I've missed, the, missed this opportunity, or at least I think so. But what I'm hoping for from here is we might get a little bit of a pullback in uh, in the cable from here. Might allow us to, you know, pull back a little bit and 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 reset and get give us another opportunity to go long. But like I said, the dollar looks kind of weak at the moment, and um, I'm just not sure if we're going to get that opportunity. So uh, I'm going to take you over to the Aussie. The Aussie's been really. Uh, Unresponsive, and and so is the Kiwi. Both the Aussie and the Kiwi have both been under pressure. With with the 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 recent dollar weakness that we've seen, the dollar has held its 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 um held held its own against the Aussie and the Kiwi, which is surprising. Which uh, I'm sure that uh, Steve and Stelios in a little bit will have to will will probably talk about. Um, We'll probably talk about like some of the crosses, like the pound Aussie, the pound, you know, New Zealand, Euro Aussie, Euro New Zealand, because those are now looking very interesting uh, currency pairs that I think that we should, uh, you know, keep on our radar. But I'll I'll leave those for for the for the other guys. But if you look at if you look at the Aussie, the Aussie is very unresponsive. It has not has not rallied much. Uh, like the the the, the euros bounce, the pound is bounced, the Aussie, not so much, but it, it can. And uh, matter of fact, let me let me take this horizontal line and let's just draw like that. You can see that we have previous support here, previous support here, and you can see where we're rejecting right now. And so, if we can get above like 78 cents in the Aussie, you know that that's just another, you know, if the euro's moving higher, the pound's moving higher, and the Aussie can break above 78 cents, then you're getting that 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 dollar move in 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 uh, in unison. Okay. Uh, JD says, "Wow, it's like the Morning Edge Throwback Tuesday." <laughs> yeah, except uh, except here, here's the difference. I've already I've already done all my support and resistance levels, so that's the, that's the only difference. I'm not going to do those with you guys this morning. I've already got those out of the way. Mm. All right, let's take a look at the uh, kiwi really quick. So here's the kiwi, and and the kiwi, you know, obviously has a is it has a bit of an issue too. The kiwi is not able to lift off of these lows, and like I said. That's where the you have to start looking at the euro 
New Zealand, Euro Aussie, pound New Zealand, pound Aussie. You know, those, those, uh, those, those currency pairs have now become very interesting because of this underperformance of these two particular currencies. Um, here's a Swissy, and I was actually just gonna, I shorted the Swissy yesterday, and I think I shorted at 98, no, 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 97, 99 yesterday. I closed it for like 10 pips <clears throat> as we were approaching this trend line, but you can see we've broken below this trend line. We have a, um, you know, we had this uh, shooting star from the other day, I'm missing a lot of lines here. I don't know where all my lines went. I had a bunch of lines drawn and they all disappeared, which I'm not sure how because I didn't do it. But anyway, we have the shooting star here, false breakout to the upside. And now that, you know, makes the, uh, the dollar Swiss a little vulnerable. So that's, you know, something that, especially if you start to get that, that's something you need to watch especially if the stock market gets a little jiggy, you know, if we start to see a little bit of uh, risk uh, aversion uh, come in. Because if we do, then the Swiss franc, like the yen, will strengthen. We're gonna talk about the yen here in just a second. Um, dollar Canadian, okay, dollar Canadian, and see this, I'm missing another chart here, I don't know why. It's weird, hold on. Give me a second. Give me just a second here. I'm gonna. Yeah, there, see, there's all my lines. My lines are back. I don't know what happened there. This is weird, really weird. Huh. Amanda said no singing, please. No, I'm not, I'm gonna keep the singing off of the webinar today. Uh, I'm no Dale. Let's, let's put it that way. All right, so um, so you can see the dollar Canadian. We 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 were closely monitoring this yesterday. If you uh, if you use Forex Analytics, uh, yesterday, uh, here we go. You can see the four hour chart from yesterday. We we're waiting for this you know this this channel. It's either going to break down or or continue higher. And then obviously we have uh, we've broken through that channel. Now you've got to be on the, you know, on, you know, be looking for, for, for Canadian, um, potential Canadian strength here or dollar weakness. We've seen probably a fairly decent reset in all the dollar or excuse me, all the Canadian longs over the course of the last two weeks. Um, you know, the market was getting pretty aggressively uh, uh, long the Canadian dollar, you know, over the last several months and um, this this move higher over the course of the last couple of weeks have probably you know flattened out some of those positions so now I think the Canadian has uh, it's it's retraced enough where the the potential to move down and maybe trade back down towards 123 uh, maybe 122 maybe you know high 123s is quite real I'm not short the dollar Canadian I'm only short the US dollar Norwegian krona right now but this has the potential. Speaking of the US dollar Norwegian krona, so we have a, uh, a near term bear flag pattern. You can see the bear flag patterns are almost complete. This is from yesterday, okay? Again, if you use Forex analytics, you're, you, you know, you, you're, you're very well aware of this. Uh, where is it? At the bottom here, there it is. So you're you're probably very well aware of it already with the um, you know the bear flag pattern that was happening yesterday, and you can see it right here, the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona hourly bear flag formation. Yep, that was from yesterday, and you know here we are today. Uh, you know, almost completed the bear flag formation, and we're coming into this big support zone this is a huge support zone here but I, I'm actually looking for lower I mean if if you if you think about what has happened here longer term um, we had this uh, we had the sell-off pull back to the 38 percent retracement and then reversal okay but not only did we have that 38 percent retracement we also had a false breakout you can see this you know this this right here squeezed a lot of people See those little highs right over here? 
see this move right here. So, um, so we we squeezed some you know some of the shorts out. We hit the thirty eight percent retracement, and now that that opens up, in my opinion, it opens up a move back down towards seven eighty, maybe maybe even lower. And if you look at this longer term. Let's go over to the uh, let's let's go over to a weekly chart. And Stelios has been uh, he, he he'll show you he's he's had this drawn out the same the same way. I mean we we sold off and we're, all we've done is we've retraced the previous support levels. You can whoops I didn't mean to grab that whole thing, um, but you can see like previous support. It's all acting as current resistance. So this is a perfect place for the for the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona to to reject. Um, and and you know can we make it all the way back down to uh, you know, 770, you know, 760, seven sure we can. Um, so I am short the US dollar Norwegian kroner at the moment. Um, and let's talk about the dollar yen. And here is the dollar yen. So the dollar yen, you know, this has been uh, really on my radar Pretty, pretty, pretty much like on my radar because we broke above this 113.25 on Friday. This is, you know, think about non-farm payroll here. We broke above that um, 119, or excuse me, 113.25 level, put in a false breakout. Then we reversed. We broke this little minor trend line. This is during the holiday, and you can see we were just kind of, you know, sliding up against this trend line and the, the I'm, I'm a little irritated because I do have and and everybody that's in our chat room and by the way I'm gonna just go ahead and grab the chat room and say hi guys you guys are in the the chat room uh, those of you that there's 67 of us in there right now and you guys are on jumbotron okay so everybody can see it um, and we got a lot of great traders in there, by the way. And to be in this chat room, you have to be a semi-annual or annual subscription um, uh, user of Forex Analytics. Anyway, like I told these guys last night, I'm like, or yesterday afternoon, I'm like, I'm selling the dollar yen at 112.85. Well, the dollar yen overnight hit 112.82 and seven tenths of a pip. So. I was looking to short right here last night, and it missed my order. So I'm a little, I'm a little miffed about that because I really want to be short the dollar yen because I knew it was a, I knew that that we had a shooting star on Friday. Yesterday was just kind of a consolidation day because it was a holiday, and I totally, totally wanted to be short, and I'm not, and so I'm. A little irritated about that but the, the dollar yen it, it looks especially if we break this like 112 and a quarter this this support here we'll probably see you know at least the 200 day moving average today which the 200 day moving average comes in at 111 you know 85 86 so and we're about right now we're about 14, 15 pips away from being, you know, of, of, of probing that support. So that's why I think that you guys need to keep a keep a close eye on this. And especially if stocks get a little heavy, one of the other things that I, you know, I guess we're going to pay attention to if we're paying attention to these yen pairs. Let's uh, let's take a real quick look at the uh, the 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 Nikkei. So here's the Nikkei. I was looking at this on Friday, and actually. We, we had a wedge, but it was Friday afternoon, so we obviously didn't get any follow through because it was Friday afternoon when I was looking at that. But the Nikkei, the Nikkei's been, you know, moving higher. And and the reason why this is so important is because the Nikkei is moving higher, yet the dollar yen is moving lower, and all these yen pairs are really struggling. I mean, if you look at the euro yen, uh, euro yen's bounced a little bit, you know, pound yen, yeah, pound yen bounced off to support. You know, Aussie yen, you know, it's holding. New Zealand yen, it's still actually under pressure. Canadian yen, I mean, it's right on support. But, you know, I just was showing you, you got the, the, the Nikkei is moving higher in a new trend highs, yet all the other yen pairs aren't moving with it. So what happens if the, you know, what happens if the Nikkei rolls over? Well, if the Nikkei rolls over and you start to see some downside in the Nikkei here, which 
again, I was looking at an ascending wedge, and maybe there's still the the ascending wedge is really still still there. Yeah, you know. it's still there, Blake. I'm still, still dragging it. Yes. Yeah, yes. Looks, yes. Yeah, it looks something like that. And, I mean, if it if it comes off and it finally starts to break down, these yen pairs are going to get demolished. They're going to get destroyed. And so that's um, you know something that I think everybody should be paying attention to, especially if you're trading yen, which I, I do have a short in the euro yen um, that I've been sitting in for the last well since Friday. So, um, and I'm and it's just a it's a small position, but I've got. I, I keep a tracking position on it because I eventually want to be short aggressively the euro yen. As I explained to you guys on the video, um, the week ahead video this last weekend. All right, now before I, I turn it over to Steve, uh, since I have the controls here, uh, I'd like to take a few questions that have come in. Um, and Arif asked a question, obviously he was asking for Dale. Uh, gold looks overbought on a daily RSI. Dollars. Well, let's take a look at gold first of all. Um, gold uh, daily RSI. You say it looks overbought. W what do you mean by overbought? I don't think it's overbought at all. If you're looking at daily RSI, daily RSI is mid range. We're in the smack damn middle of this range. So I don't know what. If it was above seventy, it's overbought. Or you know, if we're below thirty, it would be oversold. But we're mid range. On the daily, so oh, he said no, my mistake. Okay, all right. Well, so the in my opinion, we have relative strength that is actually moving; it's pointing higher, right? And we're breaking this channel. You can see the channel right there. So it looks bullish. Now, if if gold looks bullish, what does that make the dollar? Okay, bearish, right? If if you think from a correlation standpoint, so. Gold's moving up, okay. Gold's moving higher, and and it's and and like I said, it's uh, you know trying to break out of a you know this is a very crappy down channel too. It's it's, not, it's really it. I think this is probably more appropriate. You know you can you know look at it some some like this. I don't I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Probably something more like that I, I, but regardless it, it's 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 snapping higher so with with gold breaking higher it is is weighing on the dollar okay and you said something else uh, dollar Swiss possible buy around 97.45 with a tight stop 50 pips up to 98 cents why would you buy the dollar Swiss if the dollar is getting destroyed everywhere and 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 let, let, let's Arif, let's let's talk about this. All right, you you want to buy the dollar Swiss as it's just starting to break down back into the channel after a false breakout. Think about that for a moment. Just, just and 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 don't think about yourself. Think about think about the guys and gals that trade, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay, they just got squeezed and went long on Friday. And now they're getting their ass handed to them. So if we dip back into this, you know, multi-month range, and you're sitting here trying to buy it right here, are you kidding me? Chances are that we're going to probably slip back down in the mid, at least in the middle of the range. Especially if the dollar, you know, if gold continues higher, <clears throat> and the dollar continues to to, to weaken, um, and then you sprinkle on a little risk aversion, and everybody's going to start buying the Swiss franc for no no good reason. So there's, you know, because of this false breakout right here, there's a good, there's, there's a, a, a much higher probability now that we're going to slip back into this range. So you got to be really careful, um, Arif, be really careful. I, if, if I was going to buy the dollar Swiss, which I'm not going to, but if I was going to buy the dollar Swiss, I'd probably be looking at something like, okay, well, let's, let's, let's get it back down to, you know, here's a 38% retracement. It comes down to, 96.80. So at least let it let it do some sort of decent retracement of this whole move, okay? Rather than you know you're trying to buy it as it's as it's starting to break back into the channel. So just be really careful. Um, uh, Lucas says uh, Catalanian 
Independence Day tonight, Euro Yen short the trade, question mark. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't, I mean, I guess the question is how far is that going to go? They, they just had their press conference, which was, you know, no fireworks just over an hour ago. Um, you know, I don't know. It's, um, I, I mean, I, I, I I would think that the euro yen breaks down, uh, but and the euro yen is on my on my radar. Obviously, you know I've, I'm I'm already shorting it, and I'm I'm really waiting for a move below 131.70 before I get aggressive. So I'm just kind of I keep it on my screen just to have it on my screen so I don't forget about it. That's why I, that's why I have a little position. I, I like to trade tracker positions. Um, that would be a very small position in my account. Well, small position for me is still fairly large but it's you know it, you know an, a, a position where it, it it affects my thinking so therefore I you know will keep it a very close eye on it but not big enough to really impact the account too much but anyway that's something that uh, that I'm paying attention um, Luke also says another thought Catal Catal Catalan independence may force EU to really toughen its brexit stance Stakes stakes are getting higher, and so and and so incentive to punish the breakaway countries. Yeah, I mean, you know, could uh, but pound. You know, may, maybe maybe it's you know maybe the play is the euro pound on the long side. I don't know. I I I'm actually more of an advocate of shorting the euro pound while we're below 90, 90 pence personally, but um, you know, while we're below there. Blaker, yes. The Catalan president is uh, supposed to be speaking in three and a half hours from now uh, to declare what their decision is um, the, to, to address the Catalonia Parliament uh, at that time um, to talk about their decision or, or what they're willing to do following the uh, referendum. Uh, so obviously, you know, whatever he decides to say will and you know can impact uh, at least in the short term the the euro depending on on uh, how harsh um uh, or how absolute the stance they're, they're willing to take is going to be uh, as we as we know they were like torn between them during the weekend of if they if they wanted to declare like their independence and uh, take measures on that or they they wanted to to, to take some some more conservative um, approach to it, and I'm guessing that we're going to find out in three and a half hours. So it's going to be interesting. Okay, well, I'll let you talk all about that here in a minute. Let me just grab this one last question, and then I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay, so Dollar Swiss, uh, uh, JD says, Dollar Swiss with the shooting star on the daily. Okay. On the daily with the shooting star, he, he said it was concerned that the next day was slightly bullish. But you have to realize that that the JD yesterday was a holiday in the U.S. and and it was a very obviously a very slow um, uh, trading day. So when when you have very you know it's a holiday or lightly traded day, especially holidays per se. Um, banks a lot of banks are closed, so you don't have a lot of order you know order flow. That don't put don't put as much um, uh, uh, credence into that particular candle. Like I'm, I was more concerned with what happened on Friday. Friday was a high impact, high volatility day. You had huge volumes coming through because of non farm payroll. And the fact of the matter is, plenty of people got stopped out of their shorts, and plenty of people got long. Yesterday. You know, I, I think yesterday was kind of a freebie day for those people that needed to, you know, needed to get out of their longs, and those people that uh, that, uh, that 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 covered their shorts. It, it was a freebie day to get in at a better price. That's why I was trying to short the the dollar yen yesterday at at one twelve eighty five because I knew that this little retracement was on a was on no liquidity. So I I, I was trying to short into it. Anyway, I hope that made sense. Um, hope that made sense. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna pass the uh, I'm gonna pass everything over to Steve and Stelios because I got to get ready for my trading day. Um, if you guys are ready, and then um, I I don't know who the I don't know who we're interviewing today, and we haven't heard from Dale. So and and I 
and he had we 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 had one interview lined up, but that one got canceled. Then he said yesterday he had another interview that he had lined up, but I don't know who that is. Steve, do you know who that is? No idea. He didn't uh, mention specifically. Yeah, he didn't mention specifically. So, um, so the 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 thing is, if Dale doesn't get here by uh, by you know within the next half an hour, um, I, I think we'll just have to uh, you know if apologize to whoever. <laughs> you know, was coming in for a, uh, interview cause we have no idea who, who it is. Um, and, uh, and, and hopefully Dale is okay. He's, he, you know, I, I assume that he slept in, but, um, because it was also, uh, uh, last night was Monday night football. So could have very easily happened. And he's a big football fan. Steve. Yes, mate. I'm okay. Here. All right. I'm You're ready to take we'll, this. We'll, yeah, we already have uh, more questions, so uh, definitely we have things to look at. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Blake. It, All right. it was, uh, it was uh, like a, a morning ad experience for you once again. Huh? <laughs> yeah, as, 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 yeah, as unfun as that is for myself. So, um, <laughs> yes, you guys, you guys have a great trading session, I, and I hope you guys, uh, you know, got something out of today's analysis in the dollar. But stick around with Steve and Stelios. Uh, like I said, Steve, I, I I think a lot of these cross rates look interesting with the underperformance of the Aussie and the Kiwi, and I'm sure you're going to talk about those today. Definitely. By the way, Blake, since you had a look at Nikki, um, I I think that Nikki is still respecting that short-term ascending wedge. But look at the bigger structure here. It's also like a huge ascending wedge, isn't it? It is, uh, you know, but we've seen a lot of throwovers in recent oh, months. Of course, of course, of course, the, but but, but many times a throwover uh, and, you know, a rejection is, is even more emphatic. So we are already getting a little throwover there, but uh, the, this is what I'm monitoring here in the Nikkei. And if that's the case indeed, then uh, USD Yen will not be happy about it. That's the only sure thing. Uh, right. But we don't have confirmation yet. Right. So let's see what happens. Okay, have a great trading day, my friend. Thanks. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Okay, so um, okay, we already had a look at the Nikkei, although uh, stock indices is not what I wanted to show uh, first. Uh, we see in the SPX a little consolidation. If you zoom in, it's like a little triangle. Blake showed it before. Uh, needless to say that you know I, I would expect something like this to break to the upside. Um, so you know another push higher, uh, which is absolutely fine. I mean, it's, there's no surprise there. Uh, the market is completely, I mean, the stock markets are completely numb to, to any kind of news, positive, negative, whatever. They just swallow them up and keep moving higher until they stop doing so. Um, but for the time being, it is what it is. Um, okay, I, I know we had mentions of uh, gold and silver. Blake already showed gold. Um, listen, the, both both the metals are, are now approaching resistance. We talked about yesterday. Um, we talk, we talked we talked about the reversals we had on uh, on Friday, and we said that uh, you know the the levels to watch for both of them are thirteen hundred uh, dollars for gold, which is almost getting there, and the seventeen twenty five area for silver, uh, which we actually more or less tagged today. So both of the medals there we are. Uh, so both of the medals are now at or near uh, the first resistance and let's see what happens from there because if we get rejected from current levels then you should expect more downside but if we if we if we push through current levels then uh, you know it, it's a different story i wouldn't turn out right bullish anyhow because as you as you see we we talked about that as well yesterday that you know the medium term trend is not there i mean it's you know we we get choppy short term moves um, we, we get actually strong short-term moves, but the medium-term picture is still choppy. Um, so, you know, the only thing you can do is monitor the levels and, uh, you know, th these these kind of moves pre present very nice opportunities for people that, that like to, to trade short-term. But if you're looking for a direction like to, uh, um, to, to, to buy and hold or to short and hold, I, I don't think that's there. I don't think that's there at the moment. Um, so, um, uh, let's have a look at the treasuries because there was a conversation about them and, uh, let me see which of our friends asked. Arif, yeah. Um, okay. Um, we saw that yesterday we, we got, 
we got a big, big um, reaction from the channel support in the 10-year um, treasury. Uh, you, you just have to think that uh, yields are, in, are inverted, okay? Um, and uh, we, we ended up, uh, you know, crafting this uh, hammer. Yesterday, it was like a very little day. It was an inside day. Today, we so far, it's a spin top. So, you know, although none of the scandals uh, that followed really, uh, you know, give credibility to the reversal on Friday, on the other hand, it still uh, hasn't, um, uh, hasn't resumed this move lower. So, uh, you know, for me, um, this area, which is like the confluence of the ascending channel and this low there, uh, is very critical on a daily closing basis. So if we close at around like, let's say below 125 uh, on a daily closing level, I think that, uh, you know, this this is going to probably initiate another leg lower with, with, with whatever that means for the US dollar and for the metals. Obviously, you should expect that um, if the treasuries break below this channel, the metals um, uh, are also going to get rejected. So this rebound from the metals is going to be short-lived and then gonna, they're going to get rejected and, uh, you know, resume, resume their move uh, lower. Um, let's see what other questions we have Please. and then we can have... Ella. Hi. Yes. Uh, just wanted hey. to let you know, just in case you didn't see it, uh, um, Blake has uh, located Dale and he's going to be here for the interview. So, oh, okay. So we're on track. Okay. 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 Perfect. All right. Perfect. Um, okay. Um, so, um, what was I saying? Ah, yeah. Um, let's have a look at the boons as well because we haven't in uh, in some time now. Um, okay. Um, no, I'd rather look at this ticker. Okay. The boons are in a triangular probably consolidation here. Uh, after this move lower, uh, you know, th this kind of a move usually points to another leg lower. So, um, to be perfectly honest, this does not look like a bottom information. But regardless, you know, any daily close between uh, below 162.25 is going to be confirmation that we're going to get an extension lower. So, even if, uh, if let's say, we want to meet the minimum targets, um, let's have a look at it. Of course, we don't know where the triangle ends, but let's assume that that was the last leg higher. It's an assumption. Um, it's, it's pointing towards these lows. So, uh, as you see, um, I think that this, this presents a very nice trading opportunity, probably, uh, the break below the triangle. Uh, of, of course, if we see the opposite happening, and somehow this proves to be like a... Um, uh, like some kind of a bottom information, then the trend remains to the upside. But I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. This, this definitely looks like a continuation formation to me. So I would, you know, in, in my experience, I would say 70% this, this thing and ends up breaking to, to the downside. In which case, we're going to be uh, headed once again for this very, very critical support zone. Okay. And uh, this will have proved to be a false break higher from this flat bottom triangle, which also says a lot. Okay, but let's not jump the gun. Let's let's first wait for um, you know a, a break below um, the triangle support, and you know then then we can talk about this scenario more extensively. I don't think it's going to happen today, anyhow. So we're here every day. We you know we can uh, we can pay attention to it. O already the medals are somewhat pulling back, by the way, because as you saw the the treasuries when we were looking at them before uh, were breaking. Um, um, so, um, now on the other hand, we have the Euro USD, which I, I was monitoring this as a possible descending wedge. Anyhow, um, I have taken profits in this because, uh, as I said many, many times, the, the move lower is definitely uninspiring. I mean, it has no pace, it has no momentum, uh, it has, uh, you know, no, uh, none of the characteristics you would expect to see. Uh, in, in a real uh, reversal and, you know, for them being just looks corrective. And if you zoom in, you can also see that this was possibly a descending wedge, which is, we seem to be breaking above. Personally, and this is just a gut feeling, I don't have boots on the ground. I don't really think that Catalonia is going to take the nuclear option uh, today. 
And if that proves to be the case, uh, keeping in mind how well the Euro USD held, even through the bumps of the road, I mean, uh, immediately after the referendum, the first um, easy talk about, uh, you know, uh, independence, etc. I think that the more likely scenario today is getting something that's uh, softer than uh, initially expected, which if that proves to be the case, I really believe that uh, Euro USD is going to uh, is going to accelerate uh, higher to at least test this uh, 118.60, 118.50 zone. So um, I really think that the risks today for the euro are probably tilted to the upside and to the downside. But on the other hand, you know, that doesn't mean that you should jump the gun and uh, just, you know, uh, take my intuition into account because it's still just an intuition. I mean, um, you know, that, that, that's what I think. And that's the only reason, although I, I agree 100% with what Blake is seeing in the USD Swiss, I'm also monitoring this ascending wedge and ascending wedges uh, you know, generally are like um, uh, reversal formations. Uh, so this could bring like a move lower towards there, for example, or whatever. And it seems to be breaking down at the moment. But on the other hand, holding the breakout level, um, you know, I would be very, very skeptical because to, to in three hours from now, we might have something that's, uh, that's going to, um, you know, uh, create a big move here and one way or the other. So um, obviously for the USD Swiss to drop lower, we need the Euro USD to go higher, which bodes well with my idea about what's going to happen with uh, the, the Catalonian leader and whatever he declares about, you know, their potential um, separation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if, if my intuition is right, then this ascending wedge is going to play out. But on the other hand, as we've said many, many times, if the Catalonia decision is quite soft, then I would also expect the Euro Swiss to get a very nice bid, which means that I would expect some Swiss weakness, which means that it would put somewhat of a soft pillow between the USD Swiss going uh, lower. What I'm trying to say is that if you really believe that the Euro USD is going to go higher, in this case you should probably buy the Euro USD instead of shorting the USD Swiss, because the USD Swiss is going to also be supported because of the Euro uh, Swiss being supported. And speaking of the Euro Swiss, uh, we talked about it like a few days ago that it looked fine by retesting this broken triangle, and indeed it does. And if today uh, we get what I would be expecting, that should probably uh, make it even more appealing, you know, for a move uh, higher. So, um, you know, I think now we, we covered the, the trio and why you should be doing what uh, depends on, on what happens, of course. Uh, on the other hand, if we get something, let's say, uh, nuclear from them, then, uh, you know, it's a totally different story. Um, but let's first see it happen because I'm, I'm very skeptical about it. <laughs> yeah, Alex, that's true. Uh, would you clarify the, the direction of... Yeah. I think the other thing we need to think about is what do we think the market believes on this uh, whole Catalonia thing? You know, the reaction to the euro was quite muted. Okay, it sold off a little bit, but really, not even close to what it should have uh, done if it, it was considered to be a real threat that, you know, this area of Spain, you know, declaring independence, etc. So I think you're right that the, the risk is for the euro dollar to be higher or, and, you know, euro pairs to be higher. But we have to remember, what exactly is the market doing? I think it's kind of dis semi dismissing it already. You know, it's not like, oh, this is huge danger. I, I would agree with you, Stelio, but I think that the reason yeah. it's semi-dismissing it is the fact that sometimes the market just looks at maths. How many people live in Catalonia? Yes. Yeah, How many like, people uh, live? Yeah? What is it, like 15% of the of the population or something like that? It's not a huge area, but it's, yeah, it but, is large. Yeah, it is large, but what I'm trying to say is what percentage of the people that live in Europe that represents, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's as simplistic as that, but I'm saying yeah. that the market is approaching it in a simplistic way. Yeah. And yeah. you know, even if we get something strong today, I think that the market might take time to realize uh, what kind and if uh, which repercussions that uh, would entail. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you you're right. You're right. But on the other hand, it's like Greece. You know, Greece is a tiny percent of of the eurozone, but in all the troubles. It's not. It's not just what will happen to Greece or to Catalonia or whatever. But it's the results after that. You know what's going to happen next and next and next. So I yeah, think that, it's, it's a bit of both. You're, you're right. right about it. But um, you know that 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 applied more in the past uh, when there were no solid um, barriers uh, for spillover um, issues. But after yeah. the uh, let's call it 2011 European crisis, because that's when it peaked mostly. Yeah. Uh, you know, they put a lot of barriers in place and I think that, uh, you know, th uh, spillovers now uh, are, you know, a lot more easily contained than, than they used to be. Yes, I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. Okay, let's see what other questions we have. Um, New Zealand politics heating up. Peter's getting closer to Labour apparently. Change of RBNZ mandate and weak currency policy on the menu. If it happens, may see very sharp downside to Kiwi. Not the time to be long. Uh, okay, um, I cannot disagree more. I, I cannot agree more, sorry. Simply because, uh, as we've said, uh, Luca, and I'm totally in agreement with you, both of them, uh, both the Aussie and the Kiwi, look really weak. This correction in the Kiwi was clearly corrective. Uh, I really believe that uh, we, we are on our way to at least test 70. Um, and for example, the Aussie uh, is rebounding today from the level it broke out after many, many months of effort. And if that happens, uh, that's going to be also a very, very, very signal. Uh, so I'm totally with you. It's, it looks like uh, neither of uh, the two of them is a good candidate to belong. I think that both of them are I still remain good sorting opportunities uh, on pullbacks. So I'm 100% I'm with you, uh, regardless of if it's political cost or whatever, the technicals uh, tell me that uh, they, they still look uh, great to the downside. Uh, Dale, you're here as, a, as an attendee. Okay. Let me find you. Hey, Dale, you're un unmuted now. Are you here, mate? I am, buddy. I didn't want to go through the starting thing and interrupt it, so I came in this way. I just made you a presenter as well. Let me grab uh, back the monitor, but uh, I just wanted to put you there in the list. Okay, good. So Thank now you. I can have you in the list as a panelist for yes, later on. Uh, just call okay. me uh, Rip Van Pinkert. <laughs> good morning, by the way. It happens good. even to the best. Don't worry about it. Good morning, everybody. First opening bell I've missed in a decade. That's so, okay. okay. That's okay. All right. All right. You, you are permitted to miss one every five years, okay? So you have, one, you have one more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will recharge my alarm clock. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you. It's great to have a team. I know that, you know, no matter who is missing on the team, we don't miss a beat. That's true. That's very true. So that was my vacation this year. <laughs> <laughs> you overdid it, dude. <laughs> Boy, did I. I, I didn't have time to send you guys a picture on Skype, but I had a great time. Did you watch football yesterday? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So um, let, let's let's go on with the charts, and Dale is going to take over in ten minutes, so he can uh, uh, he can also have his uh, interview. Dale, by the way, who do we have for, for an interview today? What, Steve? What do who do we have for an interview today? Mason Mahdi. 
A guy that uh, has been in my rooms for many years. Very good. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so um, let's let's have a look at questions. Uh, clarify the direction of the trade. You have closed long or short. You just mentioned the euro. Uh, money. I've um, yeah. I'm mentioning the, uh, you know specifically on uh, on the chat room what I'm closing and opening. I, I've I've taken profits on Thursday and then on Friday, totally in every position I held. Uh, took profits in all my dollar long and a loss in my um, uh, cable short. Uh, and I'm only holding half of my Aussie USD short position. There's, there's nothing else at the moment I'm holding. So uh, I had a very nice week. If it wasn't for the cable, it would have been a perfect week last week. And I'm looking now for opportunities to add more trades because I only have half a trade with my uh, Aussie. But I still, I, I still don't, don't, don't see things that I really, really like. The USD knock was a trade I liked to the downside, but I was skeptical for other reasons uh, and since i had a very good week last week i'm you know i'm not looking to jump the gun for some reason so i'm gonna i'm gonna wait uh, for a few days to get more clarity what's going to happen with the dollar because for me the dollar is actually more or less in no man's land i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't go ahead and short it immediately uh, because i want to see what 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 it can do from you know this zone here because it can it can easily just put a higher low and then keep pushing higher. So I'm not convinced convinced so much that it's rolling over now and headed to new lows. But on the other hand, you know, I cannot dismiss the rejection we got from 94.20 on Friday. So, you know, being neutral on the short term for the dollar and wanting to see what it's going to do, as you understand, immediately takes away many opportunities, uh, trading opportunities. And on the other hand, the other pairs that I see that are extremely, extremely interesting uh, which are the crosses. Let's have a look at them today as well, since we mentioned it. The Eurozy. Okay, we, we said yesterday as well, it's, uh, it, 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 broke to, it broke to the upside and it, it's going to probably challenge the uh, June highs sooner or later. It's a Euro Kiwi which is leading as we said and is on its way to new highs i would want to see the 161.8 up there at 168.60 being uh tested and we see what happens from there <coughs> by the way let's also have a, a look at the euro card which in, in essence is doing nothing it's still failing to you know this is the third time i'm going to say that as long as it's failing to clear this resistance you know another move towards there is possible but on the other hand, keep in mind, this is like a soft support resistance zone. So a break above it then takes us there. So, you know, levels are quite clean, but the price action, as you see in the medium term, has been, you know, choppy. Okay, that's why I haven't been involved with it since I was short after the break uh, below the wedge. And, uh, you know, it seems that it was a good, uh, you know, it was a good idea taking profits because then it, it's, it has spent a lot of time like, more or less doing nothing. Um, and let's have a look at the pound crosses. The pound Aussie looks good. It found support, you know, at these triangles uh, support zone, but it still hasn't broken to the upside. And the pound Kiwi, which is now testing within a couple of days. I mean, Friday, we tested uh, the lows of the triangle. Two days later, we are once again uh, testing the triangles of resistance. I am actively looking to take a longer term position in the pound kiwi as long as it manages to clear this blue trend line because then uh, I will have confirmation that this whole pattern was a very nice rounded bottom in a sense uh, that took more than a year to form so it's very potent uh, so, you know, for me, the, this mega structure, let's call it, uh, is of more value than anything else you see in here. Um, I really want to see what's going to happen from there. I really, really want to see because I, I'm going to be a buyer. I mean, I'm really looking forward to be buying a breakout from uh, this area or a breakout in the retest of this uh, area, which is like at 189.50, call it roughly. Okay, and let's have a look at the pound card as well. 
which might have found already support there and beheaded higher. So it did this, let's delete it. Uh, the fact that it broke above this descending channel was uh, on, it, on its own, you know, uh, an important uh, <laughs> development. Um, let's see if we get confirmation that it found the bottom here because this can end up pushing to, uh, you know, to, to fresh uh, short-term highs as well. Oh yeah, thank you for reminding me. Use this R. Let me see the exotics because I have questions about the USDT or why. First of all, uh, Oli asked asked me a couple of days ago if I would be buying again um, USDZAR because I, I was holding USDZAR long and they took profits on Friday. If I would be buying again a retest of uh, this ascending trend line, and I told him no, simply because, and the reason I took profits actually in my USDZAR was simply because this looked to me very much like an ascending wedge. And today's move uh, tells me that, you know, it's a higher chance now that I was right than when I initially said it. So uh, I, I took advantage of it. I, I, I entered at 13.44 and I took profits on Friday, to be honest. Oh, yeah, I remember at 13.74.5. That was, that was the area I took profits on Friday. And um, I'm going to be looking once again to buy it if I see some kind of a reaction from down there. So I would like to see a pullback, a retest of this uh, area once again. And if I see some nice reaction, I'm, I'm going to be looking to buy it again. On the other hand, the USD with the Turkish Lira is even more bullish. It hasn't even closed the gap. So having to do with this, I think that any pullbacks to this area that we have the 200 DMA and we'll also close the gap uh, are going to present a very nice uh, opportunity uh, to to be buying. So that's that's what I think with uh, the USD um, Turkish Lira. Okay. Might be a break. Might be a breakaway gap, buddy. If it doesn't fill it. Might be. Might be. Yeah. Especially with the escalation we have in the relations of the two countries. Might be. Yeah. But you know how it is, Dale. I'm okay with that. I yeah. mean. Will I have missed a trade? Yes, yeah, sure. But you were wearing the best T-shirt yesterday. No, no FOMO, right? No fear of missing out. I mean, right. yeah, right. you get bumped out sometimes, but you know, uh, either, and that's that's all human and natural. But that shouldn't lead you in no. acting irrationally. You know what I mean? There could you be another lie. setup. There could be another setup, even if it continues higher, that pulls back, and now and then you know you have a breakaway gap, which is a Sure. Uh, major signal, just like, you know, you could have been late buying the breakaway gap in the euro and made a fortune. Sure. Plus, keep in mind that, you know, one of the advantages in uh, my method of trading, which uh, one of its elements is the fact that I'm monitoring a, of a lot of uh, tickers, is the fact yeah. that, uh, you know, it, it gives me the ability not to really worry about missing some trades because, you know, by monitoring like 40, 50 Tickers, there is always something to, you know, always. to get yourself involved with. Amen. Okay, so, uh, uh, oh yeah, it's uh, it's actually the top of the hour. Uh, is your guest here? C can you check or should I check? I don't I don't know how to check with the, what I have here. Uh, you wanna, I'm in, you the, write I'm in the, the Pendy, but okay. you, spell it, you spell his name M-A-I-T-H-E-M. M? -A -I -T -H -E -M. M? M A I T H E M okay. Matham. Uh, found him. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Give me one minute, okay? Absolutely. I I found him though. Hello, mate. Can you hear us? Are you here? I unmuted you. Matham. Mayhem, can you, can you hear us? Okay, I have unmuted your microphone. I don't know. Uh, can you try speaking? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly fine. Great. Okay, good. Great. Let me so, make you uh, let me make you a presenter. So I'm gonna you're gonna get a pop up asking you to share a screen. Sure. <laughs> there you are. 
and I'm ready. Okay, I, uh, we can still not see your screen. So oh, um, cool. you have to click the screen share option, buddy. Uh, yeah, show screen, and you can choose which screen you want to show. There you go. Uh, really? Yeah. Now we're seeing um, probably bank, Scotia Bank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You see a bank report? Good. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. So I'm muting myself, uh, Dale. Uh, enjoy the interview, mate. All right. Thank you, Steve. Hi, Matham. Okay. How are you, buddy? Bye, bye, everyone. See you tomorrow. Hello, Matham. Welcome to Face. I think I think this is your second time here, right? Why my fact my second time here? Not my first time. Not my second time with you, though, Dale. Yeah, and, uh, we've done a few rodeos together, buddy. So uh, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, I thank my biological clock that I woke up uh, half an hour before the interview to do this with you. So um, <laughs> everybody, um, I know Nathan from several trading rooms going all the way back to FX Street at, uh, in LAR and going forward. And he's one of the better scalpers I've met over the last few years and he has the ability to uh, trade short term and also let things run and turn them turn them into swing trades and uh, he helped a lot of people in my rooms helped me quite a bit in my room so uh, we're interested in what you have to say today and I know people were always interested in what you discovered in the markets and your methods for your trading so uh, why don't you just take it away and what do you have in store for us today? Awesome. Okay, well, <clears throat> how about we start with, uh, yeah, thanks, Dale, for that. Um, well, let's just get right into it. Well, uh, I just actually shared this trade. Just interesting enough, just this happened today. This is a Euro trade, and I shared it live on uh, Twitter about an hour ago. <clears throat> okay. And basically, it's a Euro short. And I mean, okay. this kind of exemplifies some of the stuff that I do. Yeah, I, I I mean, I used to do a lot more uh, short term, uh, more scalping, and now just because of the way it works, you need slightly more larger stop losses. And just you know what, Dale, is I'm just getting tired. <laughs> I don't have the time to just sit in front of the screen 24/7. So I'm I am doing many. I'm getting much more into swing trades. That's okay. it. Sure. Well, that's interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of people do start off that way and then they say, you know what, I, I want to have a life, I have exactly. a family, um, uh, I, I, you know, sitting and staring at my screen doesn't change my destiny. And, exactly. Uh, and I know you told me of another child on the way, so uh, you're adapting to your life situation and uh, becoming a little bit more long term. That's, That's exactly. Change. That's a, so, how did you make the adjustment? Just going to a, a longer TF? Well, you know what, Dale? It's uh, I use very much. I I don't think it's possible to change your. You know, we, we are in tune with a particular trading style, is what I think. Like we naturally gravitate to what makes sense to us, right? There's right. room in the market for everybody. Um, you know, for all styles, I think. So I did not go. I. Sure, yes, I did go to a larger TF. What I basically am doing, so for example, like uh, I'll show you here, this is a trade. Um, well, this, like, I'll talk to you about this trade here. Like, if you look at this Euro trade, um, this is a trade. So, you know, this error pointing now, this is a trade that I took, uh, when was this? I think it was two, three days ago, uh, October 4th. So, like, I, I did a short here. So, now what I'm doing more of is typically what I would have done with this short is I would have taken it and exited quickly as it comes down somewhere in around the same daily uh, support resistance. So this is like here, this level, this 1748, this is like a London low. So I would have usually exited there. Whereas what I did here is I adjusted my stop loss and I tried to ride it out. And I wrote it out to this, you know, this low over here. So definitely much better reward to risk, but at the same time I get stopped out a lot more now. Like before, I would not get stopped out as much. I would hit my targets, you know, quick little targets, usually within the same day. But yeah, now you used I'm, to uh, take partial profits a lot. 
I a lot of partial year. profits I used to do, and yeah. I still do. I will still do. So if if I get somewhere around two to one reward to risk and it happens quickly, you know, sometimes the market snaps in your direction, I will exit part of the profit. But now I try to let more of it run, and it's just a much more relaxed, it's easier for me to trade this way. I can still do stuff with my kids, uh, with my kid right now, and, and like you said, there's another one on the way. So I've had to adjust, but my trading style remains more or less the same. I enter more or less the same, but I do, like my take profits, my stop losses, yes, I use a larger time frame. I have larger, uh, I basically just extended um, my targets, sort of, that's what I've done. Okay, so on, your, on the trade that you're in live right now, um, yeah. you know, a lot of people would say it, it almost looked like a breakout, you had a straight horizontal line that it poked through. What was it that you saw that uh, compelled you to take a short in the euro today up there? Yeah, cool. Let's talk about that. So, <clears throat> so talking about the euro, so, I mean, here it is. I shared it live about an hour ago, right? And, I mean, yeah. this is – it takes a lot to share, share something live, right? Because if I enter this live here and it just flies out, well, that's a loser, right? But I mean, we're not worried about that because overall, we're not worried about one trade. This may still go into a into a into a loss because it still has not hit my adjust level. But uh, yeah, I have no fear of sharing these things live. I mean, overall, over a, a, statistically over, let's say, ten sample, I end up in the profit more often than not. So why would I go long? And here's what I want to show you about this one: is generally speaking, like if you look at this bank report, and this is typically what I do in the morning. I'll read bank reports just to have a general idea of what everybody's thinking but I mean the dollar is in broad retreat so really euro most people are bullish right now yes. if you look at the chart it looks like it's kind of starting to turn here this is actually looking like it's starting to turn to the upside however with me I don't necessarily care if I you know what everybody else is saying I do what I have done and to get into, well, I thought, hmm, let me look at this. I look at these levels, and if you look at this 118.20 level here, so something around, let's say here, 118.20. Okay. If you look at this level here, this green line, look yeah. at how much involvement there's been in the past, okay? For weeks, it kind of hung around here, got out, came here, and I've showed this on my Twitter before. Basically, here, resistance becomes resistance, becomes resistance, boom, now it becomes support support and we're talking about generally the area not an exact dot level right so 1837 right. to 1820 here we break through <clears throat> resistance again right look at this resistance level i caught a short here now this short here was not a very good idea it ended up paying well but the truth is you know this could have moved up a bit more and tested this level but anyway here what i'm actually trading is i'm actually bullish longer term in the euro so if you ask me i have to take the direction and hold it for a while, I'd probably go long. But in the short term, what I see is price broke above this level, and I believe still we will have some resistance here. And I've looked at it, RSI a little bit on the high side, and we're moving up. We've got one day where we moved a decent amount up right here on the Friday. Right. Exactly. We need it on Monday. Shot up here on, on the Tuesday. This price move, this price move to me, I believe has room for a retrace down to about somewhere like that 1750 level All okay right? so you entered it at 1795 your yep. original stop was 1810 and yep. then once it started moving your into your direction you pulled your stop loss down to uh, so, seven, 1779 or you haven't done that yet i have not done that yet so i will adjust okay. my stop loss to break even at 1779. Let's just say 1780. Let's make this simple. So 1780. Right, so so right. that's not a break even. That's a, a uh, oh, oh, at BE. So the number keeps changing there. 1780. That would be a profit stop if you pulled it down to 1780. Well, so what I would do is when price hits 1780, as this comes down and we get to around this level, yeah, I would then adjust my stop loss, which is currently up here around 1810. I would then bring it down, so my entry is 1795, roughly here. I'll bring it yeah. down about 1793, just to cover my uh, cost of trading, basically, and take a little bit, um, but basically to cover the cost of trading. And then I will attempt to let it run 
to about somewhere here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to catch a wave essentially, right? I'm trying to catch this coming up and hopefully we're gonna see a drop of it somewhere here. I will then exit and maybe I'll leave a little bit to go down here. But again, under the current market circumstances where I'm mainly bullish euro, I may take profits out quickly. So if we get a snap down to about this level, the 1755 level, somewhere around here, I'll probably exit the full position. That's, okay. uh, that's how I do it. Now my intention typically is, I'm hoping we get a good break eventually to the top side where I then could ride that out and see if we can basically catch a wave and ride it out to the top. Okay. But short term, I'm just looking for a small little, you know, let's say uh, I entered here at 1790, hold on, so let's say 1810 is my stop loss, my entry 1795, you know, so around here, this is basically 100% profit, 200% profit, so somewhere around here, 250% profit is what I'm looking for, like a 2.5 to 1 on this trade is what I'm looking for. So, so I, rec I recall from past interviews that you had made some type of discovery about just how the waves and the fractals work, and I remember you trying to teach it, and it was, it was very interesting. It's uh, you know kind of like a roadmap for you on all markets. Uh, do you remember yeah. teaching that? Yeah, I mean, I look at... <clears throat> I look at fractals, it's, uh, it, it, it is quite simple. It's not, that, uh, it's not that difficult really, but the way I trade, it, it, to me it just makes sense. I look at a chart, I kind of understand what it is that resonates with me, what makes sense with me. And uh, yeah, waves, what you called it, fractals. But essentially what I'm looking for is simply put light price, like let's, let's just look at and it's a fractal meaning the way price behaves is a fractal it is repetitive on multiple time frames so just looking at this and i mean i don't need to go to a specific example i'll just look at this chart as you look at price come down or even go let's say it's going up here and here and then comes down here so as you look at it coming down here it comes down here it finds liquidity at this area all right as you see price it finds liquidity at this area comes up, finds liquidity up here. Eventually, there's a breakout. So what I like to do is I like to look at these levels where price essentially gets confined in. Finds liquidity, there's harmony, there's liquidity on the top side here, liquidity on the bottom side here. Eventually, a stimulus enters the market. Now, that could be anything, right? It could be simply a large player coming in. It could be market conditions have changed. Price eventually moves out, right? You see it moving out here. Right. Price eventually moves out, okay, to the downside, one reason or another. Now, what happens, and this is, I'm using an example of something that was not all that successful, but what happens is you see this area up here where price was in harmony, let's call it harmony, where price was in a consolidation. This is an area where there was broad liquidity, okay? So there was a, a good amount of liquidity up here that the, that the market held. Now this has only tested it once, not all that much, but as you see when price comes up here, it's able to find liquidity again, okay? Now how far down it goes from here, when you enter here into a liquidity zone, how far down it goes is quite, who knows, right? I don't know, is it gonna come all the way down? Is it only come, to come down to here? But as I enter these liquidity zones, my intention is to catch a move, have a reasonable stop loss, and attempt to ride this out down to a target. So hypothetically, let's say I was, I, in this example, let's say I entered here, okay, around let's say 1765, into this liquidity zone. And again, I'm just picking this out. I just, you know, you asked me and I just saw this, right? And if I shorted here, okay, let's say my intention was to ride it out down till here, okay? Mm -hmm. Choosing these areas is not that hard. Managing is where I find the majority of the skill comes in, like post-entry management. And I've kind of spoke about this before in, um, you know, in LAR back when you had, uh, when Dale uh, <clears throat> was, uh, when you hosted LAR. What I will do is I'll enter here, but the majority, what I believe the strength of my technique is, is really as price starts to turn in my way, I adjust my stop loss to a break even because you never know how far price will really go before it turns against you, right? 
Right, and, right. and I don't like to get into these, you know, funks where I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, if I only had my stop loss up here, I would have got this. The truth of the matter is you don't know. You really don't know. So I understand what I think will happen in a slightly longer term scenario, but I use technical analysis to enter. So I'll enter somewhere above in this liquidity zone, what I would have identified this as a liquidity zone. And this is a weak one, really. It's a one day one. But I would have entered somewhere here, let's say, got short. And as price starts to move in my direction, I would adjust my stop loss to break even. And so what I have, typically what happens with my trading. Yeah, I notice that's your goal. I mean, uh, your goal is uh, even when you're wrong, your stops, uh, you know, I, I rarely saw you wrong where you put a position on and it went to your original stop. And uh, exactly. your, your, your goal is uh, to, you know, if you're wrong, you lose two pips. And uh, then yeah. you, you go to BE as uh, quickly as the market will allow you to do so. Exactly. So it's and not. Then, and then you exhale. Exhale. That's you know what? I don't want to have stress at night when I sleep, Bill. I don't know about you. Like I've had enough of that. You know, my kid is crying at night sometimes. You know, like I got to go change diapers. I'm busy, right? So I don't want to know I have a position on, and it ruins. It does. It does affect your sleep. If you're out and about, you're wondering. If you're at the gym, you're thinking, Hey, I wonder what happened with that. I don't want to be checking over and over. And so as soon as my position moves into a reasonable amount of profit. I adjust my stop loss to break even, plus two or three pips, essentially just to cover my trading costs, right? I just right. want to cover my trading costs, and that's it. I exhale. I'm at basically a risk-free proposition now. I don't care what the market does. Now, of course, if there's news in the horizon within a short period of time, like so let's say I entered here, price comes down here, there's some, like, you know, FO, if there's FOMC news, if there's NFP news, it depends what it is what I would do is I would actually even exit a large position right and slight profit because you don't want to hold into that right we're not we're not gambling we're not if I want to gamble I'll go to a casino I'll gamble and I'll enjoy it. but you don't want to gamble right have price spread uh, have price basically yeah. huge against you or in your favor but I don't really like to gamble right we're trying to approach this in a professional fashion and so Yes, a lot of my entries will eventually, um, I take not that many losses. I take a lot of break-even hits. And every once in a while, so basically like this entry here, every once in a while, which was basically off of this larger move. But anyway, every once in a while, I ride something out, right? And every time I ride something out, I get somewhere around the 5%, you know, 5 to 1 reward to risk ratio. And uh, that's kind of how I'm trading more now. And so I would say maybe 75, I don't know, 60% of my, I, I'm trying to come up with a number. Recently, I've hit a couple good ones. Uh, typically, about one a month, I'll ride it out real nice. And other than that, I'll have, let's say, uh, less losses than wins and then a whole bunch of uh, break-even hits, right? But I trade in a way that works for me. I trade in a way that I'm very comfortable and I minimize risk. I don't want to be holding risk. That's that's my main goal. I want to minimize How risk. How long has it been uh, that you've been utilizing this style and, uh, you know, uh, how, how about worst case scenario, you put the trade on, it goes to your original stop. Um, how frequently does that happen? Very, okay, so my, my original stop being hit is quite rare. Uh, in terms of how long I've been using this, so for those who don't know, the reason I'm, I'm guessing the reason you're asking that is the typical trading style you've seen me do is it's quick in and out, um, quick profits. And so the reason I've been doing this uh, for a very long time, just probably as long as anything else, the reason that uh, you I've, I've been doing this more now or the reason you're seeing me do this more is i've just been doing a lot less scalping uh or i will scalp but really my intention is to catch a move and ride it um the, and again what has happened is simply i've had to adjust uh deal as like you know i have my daughter goes to uh gymnastics and uh ballet and whatever i i just can't sit in front of the charts like i used to as a uh, younger younger man with no responsibilities right so <laughs> 
that has forced me to basically adjust and move to more uh, catching moves. How often do I go into a loss? It's, uh, well, okay, let's, you know what? Let's well, take I'm getting to the point of uh, how long have you been trading profitably? Like, uh, oh, how long have I been trading profitably? So with this particular, uh, with this style, I would say, uh, well, in general, in general, from about 2013, 2014, I can say I have consistency because, or I would say I'd have consistency since about then. Um, okay. And how long did it take you to get there? Uh, Dale, I started trading, uh, I think it took me longer than, well, I started trading around 2008, 2009 in stocks. I'm not sure if you remember the, uh, well, yeah, the, the subprime mortgage, right? The crisis. Right. So I kind of was baptized by fire. I entered, I started trading at the worst time. <laughs> I entered when basically Armageddon uh, hit the market and I, I, uh, <laughs> I was baptized by fire. Quickly got quickly uh, quickly blew one account very quickly, Dale. And okay. uh, and I said, yeah, you know the market is against me. Screw this. You know went through my growing pains. Then came back into it slowly in forex and foreign exchange. Blew another account eventually slower this time, but blew another account. And then you know I knew that the market is against me again, and they're out to get me. And eventually I came back to it. So. You know, that was somewhere like 2010, 11, if I remember correctly. So if I was to say from 2009 until 2013, 14, realistically. Okay, four long. years. Four years. You know I get that answer a lot. Yeah, four or five it's years. Actually, it's actually pretty, it's actually pretty uh, realistic because I asked that question on almost every interview. So okay. it was like you had to go back. To get, you went to college and it took you I went to college to get, to get your yeah. degree. Okay. Yeah, you basically, and that's the way, what you just said is a nice way. I've heard this analogy where would you go and uh, play, in the, like, you know, with, with trading in order to be successful, you're, you know, you're trading against some of the best, right? And uh, for you to have consistent, and that's the, the key, consistent tra trading, right? Consistently profitable trading is is key to me. I don't care if I see somebody who all of a sudden hits 200% in one month, I want to see you do 1% a month consistently for a year. Can you do that? If you can do that, I will give people, I, I will give you money and you trade that. I'll give you, so consistency is key. And, and it takes about, in my opinion, what it would take at least to get a college degree and hard studying. Like, I mean, Dale, I put like thousands of hours into this, right? I've given up. I've punched walls. You know, I've been upset several times where things don't work out. And eventually, if you stick with it, eventually there is light at the end of the tunnel, sort of. Mm -hmm. But you gotta stick with it. It's just like a college degree. Uh, it's just like you're basically playing in the big leagues if you achieve consistency, in my opinion. You know, you're not gonna go on an NFL team with one year of throwing a football around and think, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be all right. No, you gotta put in time. And it's the same thing here. You gotta put in time. You're not gonna watch one video or me explain my quick fractal here and go and apply it and all of a sudden start turning, you know, quit your daytime job and become a trader. You got to put so in time. I, that's I, it. I see some things on your chart like OPPD and there were some other uh, labels that you had on your charts. You want to just quickly sure. go over what they stand for? Sure. Just well, first of all, this red and this red are fails. Those are times I took a fail in the market. <laughs> okay. So, so in terms so of, yes. So you, you plot your trades on the uh, on the chart, and uh, you show the ones that worked and the ones that didn't work on the chart. I have it, yeah, I keep everything. So for example, okay. since September, or sorry, this is July, right? Yeah, so since July, I mean, it, well, you know, the red stick out. So since July, I've had, you know, two fails. So I'm kind of due for one, right? It's been a while. My last one is, basically was in August. So um, some of my, some of my abbreviations, sure. So. Op OPPD, so opposite. So what I mean here is I got an opposite setup. So basically the market here is moving out of this fractal, moving into a larger term fractal from back here. My chart doesn't have it. And so basically what I'm saying is I was looking to go long in here, like looking at this guy. I was looking to go long at this point in time. On July 11th, 
I was looking to go long at 114.20, but then I had an opposite setup where I'm looking to go short at basically 114.60. And so what I'm saying is uh, basically don't enter. Uh, and in this case, if you look at it, so this is a perfect example. If I went long here, 114.20, stop lossing it below the fractal, okay, price would have, you know, hit my 14.20, moved to my, in my direction for a bit. Then I would have had a short at the same time, right? I could have played this both ways and it could have worked out. It could have worked out, <clears throat> right? Take a, you know, this move this way a bit, adjust my stop loss to break even, hit my short, this, you know, so the long would have hit my stop loss, but the short would have had a take profit. But I don't enter these. I don't like it when the market, in my opinion, in my understanding, the market is in conflict. I like it when the market is strong in one direction. And so I would enter. So an example is here. Okay, so this is a, this is a long I took. Um, and the, the way this symbol looks, so for example, this, to me is a reversal when you see this type of arrow. This is a reversal setup. This is a okay. continuation setup, depending on what the market is doing. So in this guy's case, I went long at 115.15, and uh, I don't know if I took a profit. To, I don't know if this ended up hitting one. I don't know if this went long enough for it to hit a profit. This probably went out enough just to miss a profit, just looking at its size, uh, and probably came back and hit my break even. So. That that's a common occurrence, right? Move and out. You do all the, you do all this on a sixty minute chart. The majority of your work. The majority of my work, my my default time frame is a sixty minute chart. Yeah, forty five minute is a chart that I like. I like a forty five minute chart. It's kind of weird. It's not common. I know. Um, I usually look at forty five minute charts. So, uh, but I also like a 60 minute chart. I'll tell you why. So when I come to my master, this is like my master view. This is what I look at. These are the currency pairs that I mainly trade. So basically mainly against the dollar and I also trade crude down here. So uh, West Texas Intermediate US oil. Okay. But yes, um, typically I look at the 60 minute chart and, or sorry, I look at a 45 minute chart. But the reason I like a 60 minute chart is see, enough of it fits so for example if I had this chart like this I can see definitely not just you know so if this is if we're looking at this chart here on this day I can see yesterday and the day before and it just gives me a good enough snapshot if I just want to have a quick look at what's happening in the market so that's that that's why I use a 60 minute chart to be honest with you but really it does not matter I will use somewhere between a 45 minute and a 120 minute chart typically Okay, and so I, I assume the trade you're uh, uh, the trade you're in now. Oh, you're moving around was a reverse. You you write RVR yes. or something like that for a reversal. Trend. Yes, yes. I'm looking yeah. to I'm looking I'm looking for a reversal. So okay. the way I manage these, <clears throat> so you look at this one and this like I think I've showed you this before. I'll manage it down to the one minute initially. Like down to the one minute is how I look at it because market, again, if you look at this, like here's, a, here's an example happening today. This price is finding liquidity in and around this A1787 level, right? Right, so right. right up to 1787. You see it come here, it finds liquidity, drops out, comes here, finds liquidity. Then I see it, and this is right down to the one minute, right? And I've showed, I kind of showed this before, and you're seeing it essentially starts to climb, pops up. I find it that it fails below here. Gives me an entry. I enter 1795. So I entered. I think it was here on this one, 1795. I entered here. Now, okay. initially, what I'm looking at is when I manage it, Dale. I manage it right down to the one minute initially. Just initially, right? Just initially, I manage it right down to the one minute. And if I look here, so I see this drop. Price comes here, and look like it. We're talking about like three, four pips, really. But it drops here, moves on out. And when price does this, so I really like to see it hit 1779. That's why I said 1779. If you're wondering why, like when I said 1779 here, initially I wrote 1779. That's why, okay, I wrote okay. that. But what I do also is depending how it's moving, see, if I see it having trouble, like I want to see it do this. But if I see it having trouble, and again, when we come up with numbers like 1779, you know, Dale, depending on how the market moves, we may adjust our profits, we may adjust our what we do, right? 
So when I see it struggling to get down here, the second it hits 1782, okay, I adjust my I adjust my break even now. So I'm actually like we're just above my break even. I'm probably going to get stopped out now, right? But I don't like seeing it struggling. I'd like it to move in my direction. Let's get going in my direction. I want to see basically liquidity seeking down to the downside. So there's a high there's a high degree of probability that I'm going to get stopped out of this trade too, right? Because my stop loss is like right here. Hang on a second. I'm just going to check my trading platform. Sorry, one second. Yeah. So so <laughs> yeah. So I'm a, I'm about I'm about a pip away from getting stopped out, which is typical. So you can ask, well, why don't you take a quick profit here? I don't like taking quick profit. I I just would rather catch something and ride it out is the way I feel more comfortable now. Okay. All right, part. well, it was a great presentation again, Nathan. So uh, the best way for people to follow you and Gutsy to, you know, lay out a live trade scalp in front of an audience, you know, a lot of people yeah. wouldn't want to do that because, you know, uh, it's like I say, uh, words that Twitter traders choke on are, I don't know when I was wrong. So if you could be wrong at break even, uh, you're winning the you're winning the uh, the battle. So the best way for people to follow you are is at uh, and on Twitter at yeah. Nathan Motti. Okay, everyone write it down if you want to follow Nathan and his strategies and uh, be alerted to some of the things he's looking at. You could follow him on Twitter at Nathan Motti. Thank you, my trading warrior brother, for coming in today, and I'm, I'm certainly glad I woke up in time for us to have this conversation. Absolutely, Dale. Thank you very much for having me. All right, Face. Uh, thank uh, Nathan for being with us, and uh, he's a great follow, and a great follow in my opinion. And everyone have a great day, and I promise to be here on time tomorrow. I'm going to recharge my alarm clock. So. Uh, good hunting the rest of the day. I hate to miss turnaround Tuesdays, but we'll see what's uh, what's on the agenda for tomorrow. Uh, and above all, and I know Nathan takes this to heart, don't just count your pips, count your blessings, and I'll see everyone tomorrow. See you guys. Thank Bye you, now. bud. Thank you, buddy. You all right. Me. All right. See you, face. I'll be here for the opening bell tomorrow, I promise. Adios.